Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, um, welcome to the Wellington edition of the Central Bank New Zealand Roadshow. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd, which is good. It's quite for me. But for anyone who doesn't know who I am, uh, my name is Steve Flynn. I'm a business development engineer for Central Bank New Zealand, based here in uh, Wellington. So, just a few personal words from me. I'd like to thank you all for um, taking the time to come out this evening. I've got some pretty interesting stuff I'm going to show you tonight and then uh, we'll be moving you downstairs for some refreshments afterwards. Uh, you've got a fire on your seats, there's a bag of goodies, a few little, little thank you gifts, plus a menu for the, um, the new burner and a brochure on the, the new boilers that we're going to be talking about today. So once again, thank you for uh, coming along, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome, just to further in what Steve has said. Um, I guess the big picture out of this road show is that uh, it actually started just about 18 months ago. Um, but it really kicked into gear last Monday. We've actually started this road trip in Invercargill and made our way, sometimes slowly, other times not, up through the country. Um, so last Friday we finished up in Nelson. We're chucking around in a big van, hauling all our gear, took the ferry across, and I have to admit, as of today, I've officially killed a horror van. So I've been running around trying to get a replacement van, but we're good to go again. So we're actually finishing in Hamilton this week. And the big picture out of it is, is for a lot of the customers, even for myself that I'm getting to meet, uh, that I've spoken to over the last five years, it's lovely to meet everybody. It's great to showcase this diesel boiler that we all have literally designed specifically for the New Zealand market. But it's also really key that we get an opportunity to stand in front of a lot of our existing and new customers and actually just reset and look at what Central Heating New Zealand is. Um, so that's really the point that I'm going to cover tonight. After that, then what we're going to do is have a couple of additional speakers. Mario, who's absolutely ending up the champion of this whole roadshow, he pretends he doesn't have good English, but he does. Uh, Mario is after traveling specifically from uh, the Elko Burner Factory and spending the two weeks with us explaining how the burner operates. So he's going to go through the history of the Elko burner and how they actually got to the point that they are today. Then we'll have Colin Murphy, who's the CEO of Firebird. Now I know you won't know that I'm an immigrant. The Irish accent is well after fading at this point, but I'm actually ex-Firebird. So prior to moving to New Zealand, I actually worked for Firebird. So it kind of shows an extra level of depth that we have with the company as well. And finally, Stuart, Stuart's the leading engineer, the engineering manager for Firebird. He's just gonna go through the technical details of the boiler, just to emphasize the USB, the unique selling points, the unique features that we're after putting into this boiler for all of you guys. <coughs> right. So let's start at the start. There's uh, people in the room who've dealt with Central Heating New Zealand since it actually started, but it actually goes way back before Lyle and Lewis actually set up the company. It actually starts back in 1989. And how it starts back in 1989 is Lewis was actually on an OE in London and he met his now wife, Linda. Lyle came over to London for the wedding and he met his now wife, Melanie. And at this point, I always have to say, both Kiwis met fine, strong Irish women because they're originally of Irish blood. But that's actually where it all starts. Because what actually happened was, is when they all moved back to New Zealand, they installed central heating into one of their houses. Now, to put this in perspective, even for myself, in Europe, every house is central heating. I was born and bred with central heating. So I was in a rural community, out in the Wap Waps, electricity would go off. First thing my dad used to do was go out, put on the generator, radiators warm again with the diesel boiler. It's the norm. So for us, weak Irish that move across here, or any expat that's used to it. It's totally different to sit and spend a winter inside in the house without central heating. So after the wives, happy wife, happy life, or the version that every man has, which I won't say, after a bit of nagging, they installed central heating in their own place. And as they sat around the table, they said, there's actually something here. We actually have something here. This actually transformed the house. This is what we're actually going to look at doing. Now there's an important second point on that. Way back in 2001, Firebird were one of the first suppliers of, New Zealand, of Central Heating New Zealand. And still to this day, 
they're coming out here visiting us and supplying us our borders. So that relationship really goes back to the core. In 2002, Central Heating New Zealand Limited was established. So here we go, the picture starts to go. By 2003, Lyle and Lewis have installed 30 heating systems. So momentum was gaining on it. Space was limited. At that time, they were actually operating out of their, their dad's garage, so they were getting a little bit bigger. They moved into a premises in Park House Road out in, out in Wigram in Christchurch. And they started adding employees onto the team. Moving forward, we had, in 2005, we added a few more sales reps, particularly to the uh, retail division in Christchurch. And DeLonghi Radiators came on board. Still to this day, we use DeLonghi Radiators. What I've done through this presentation, it's not to actually not name team members, but it's to name members that you guys actually are familiar with and that you deal with every day, just to give you a vision as to how long they're actually with us. In 2007, two key members joined. Jeff Maynard, who's our lead engineer. Jeff actually now works external from Christchurch and reports into the office. And Julie in trade sales. As I've said every night, Julie's the girl who would do anything for the customer. She's an absolute wizard for you guys when you ring through with your orders. In 2008, we established our training centre. So that's when we started training trade customers nationwide how to install central heating. In Ireland, the UK, Europe, it's all part of your plumbing course. So it was a whole new learning curve for everybody as to how they actually install a diesel boiler, how they install a manifold, it was a different picture. To put it in perspective, typically we run three training blocks. One, before heating season, start of the year, and two thereafter. We had to cancel one training block this year, obviously because of the roadshow, but we still actually trained 120 plumbers. So it's reasonably big as to how many people are showing investment into this industry nowadays. In 2008, we also took on Baxi Boilers, and they still supply us our gas boilers. 2010, our team members started increasing and we added James Steele. Now, a lot of people will start nodding, they know James Steele. James is an excellent engineer and he's actually fronting our commercial division and, and jumping at leaps and bounds year in, year out. 2011, we were getting too big for our old premises in Parkhouse Road, so the Smiths built a new premises down in Pilkington Way and our staff numbers jumped dramatically up to 30. Then we started moving across to the North Island. Steve joined us in 2014, and another rep we have further north is Colin, and he looks after the Upper North Island. Those two team members came on board. Again, every night I sigh, and I can contain the sigh. In 2016 and 17, we did a block. And I still haven't showed our guests what the block looks like. The block, that Friday panic, that sometimes you think is <coughs> done for cameras, it's real, it's horrible. You get somebody on a Friday morning that decides they want the black radiator change pink. It's just ridiculous what happens there. But we committed to it for two years. And the emphasis of that commitment was of a national picture. When all you guys who are, who are currently installing central heating, you know that a lot of your market has, or probably still, are expats or older people who are on their second or their third house. What we wanted for the block was to show the younger people, radiators are okay, radiators are normal, radiators are the way to heat your house and underfloor. So we really wanted to open the gates to those first home buyers and show them what true whole, heat, whole, whole home heating actually is. So that was our emphasis of it and we hope we have actually achieved it. Last but not least, jump forward to today. So we now have 50 team members and um, eight of them which are sales reps, six engineers, and earlier this year, Rene actually bought into our company. So now we have a great, strong company who actually took interest in Central Eden, New Zealand and Christchurch. So they actually alone see the potential as to where this whole industry is going. Why do we do it? What drives us every day? Now what I'm gonna say is the real, true passion that those 50 team members actually feel every day. This is the beautiful photograph we have. Check Mario's phone. Mario had to clean out a whole load of, of photos on his phone because he's taking so many clips around the place in New Zealand. This is what we all see. This is what I saw before I moved here. This is the reality. We're bloody frozen inside in our houses. A lot of people know Christchurch. First year here, we moved to Littleton. Good old Littleton. 
we moved to the darkest corner of Littleton. We didn't see the sun for eight weeks. There was black mold in our bedroom. That was the first year I have ever lived without heating. But it was the best thing for me to experience because I actually saw it as a Kiwi actually lives. I know it's been extreme in Littleton, but it was hard going. So what we actually do every single day is strive to transform Kiwi lives. Strive to have happy faces like that. They may be after an argument, but the house will keep them warm and keep it happy. So that's what we do every day. How do we do it? We've got core values. We strive and live by our core values. However, we've got that huge picture, that BHAG, that we call our big, hairy, audacious goal. And that big, hairy, audacious goal is to have 10% of Kiwi homes with central heating by 2025. It's kind of one of those that we we'll probably push out as time goes on. We've done it already. However, reality is, building code across the world has heating in it, except for South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Why? It's ridiculous. Where are we at the moment? Possibly about 2%, plus or minus 0 0.1, 2%. 2% of, of Kiwi homes have central heating. Now look at the picture. Now look at where we are. And the best moment all of us can feel when we install a heating system, particularly, is in an old bratty villa, that horrible house in Littleton I lived in. And you go in and you install radiators and a diesel boiler, and within three to five days, you've absolutely transformed that house. You've transformed that family's life. And that's what our big, hairy, audacious goal is, is to do that every single day. How do we do it? Well, we can be an awesome team, but we need awesome products. So, we have a whole heap of uh, suppliers. First and foremost, we've got Firebird. Still our core supplier since Lyle and Lewis actually established the company. Moving on from that, we get our boilers from Baxi, the Lange radiators, and the only non-European product we actually bring in is our Shofu heat pumps that come from Japan. Obviously, the Japanese, Japanese engineering with respect to heat pumps is above and beyond. Moving through, we have our pipe work, our multi-tubal pipework comes from Germany, a whole heap of other products that balance off against it. Key ones being our fire manifolds and our ITAP manifolds. A lot of you guys may be familiar with our older Watts manifolds. We're transferring from Watts onto ITAP now. So you'll start to see a bit of a change there. Again, the list goes on. Let's make a wee little link. Heat Ray Savia is what our, our hot water cylinders are. They're actually a sister company of Baxi. So we're engaged with all the big companies and actually pulling their material across from them. Sorry for those in the exact corner. But one of the latest products we've actually brought to it is the Nest thermostat. And we actually have the Nest thermostat plugged in live in the corner. And we were lucky enough that Google actually asked us to be part of their trial for Asia specific. And I know somebody inside the room said he was actually, and you were one of them, that we actually used to trial the product. Finally, we've got our hands on it. So we're able to sell that. What else is core to us? Well, a lot of you guys will actually know, or you may not know, we have a retail division in Christchurch. Why do we have it? A, it's how the company started out. Lloyd and Lewis were installing themselves. But B, it's actually really core to you guys, nearly more over so than us. Any new products, our installed crew install first. Any issues, we see it in line with them. So how we actually see our installation division in Christchurch is, it keeps us live, it keeps us constantly live with you guys. Whatever product you're installing, they're installing all the time. So it's parallel with us. To put it in perspective, what we've actually achieved in Christchurch is, is since Lyle and Lewis set up the company, we've actually installed 2,500 heating systems in the greater Christchurch region. So it's a reasonable volume of systems. But we also service and maintain a high percentage of those. So we're constantly going out, looking at our components, looking at the longevity, it keeps us real. People may ask, why the photograph? Obviously for us as a team of 50, this roadshow was huge. <coughs> it was massive. So we tried to engage people as to projects that meant something to them. So we spoke to Glenn, who's one of our longest trips with us. And this is a project that stood out for him. There was a really old, cold villa up towards the, Mount, the, the Alps on the South Island. 
and we went in, installed the two diesel boilers, reasonably big system, about 30 radiators, and bang, within an instant, it transformed the whole, whole house. So for Glenn, that's been involved in about two and a half of those heating systems, this is one that he really remembers. <laughs> the other thing that we have that is core to us is our, our uh, engineering division. Most important thing for you guys is, and I'll give you the reason why I'm showing you a gas boiler from Christchurch, is when you meet your customer or when you have the plans, there's a couple of things that we only ask you guys to do. And then we'll take all the weighted load off you and give you a pack back. What we ask you to do is decide what type of emitter you want. Does the customer want radiators? Do they want underfloor heating? Define what their lifestyle is. And then we work towards the heat source. Is it a diesel boiler, gas boiler? What actually do they want? Once you get that information, the big picture is that you send it into our engineering team and we take over it. And we take all the headaches and all the responsibility out of it by actually designing a system. Why I show this picture in particular, this got Canterbury uh, House of the Year, it's down um, close to Sumner. But, there's a German, very used to gas boilers. That was literally what he was born and bred with. He was a marine engineer. So he absolutely only knew radiators, and he said, wouldn't change his mind, he was old school with on the floor, and absolutely wanted a boiler. Now we all know what a gas boiler running on LPG costs. You are so lucky on the North Island that way. But we gave him exactly what we wanted. What we do in the engineering side, and a lot of you will know it, is we have all our own IP inside house with our six engineers. So we carry out a heat loss on the property and we determine what, heat, what, what kilowatt is required for each of the emissions in the room and add it up for the heat source. What we give you back is a pretty layout for the householder. Uh, we give you a quotation and as you work through the job for installation, we'll supply a pipework layout or an underfloor layout and I need to ask the famous question that I've asked every night, any sparkies in the room? Okay, no offence, but you're probably more than capable. We, we have a lot of electricians who are not capable. And what we find is, when you guys go to press the on button, there's potentially a wiring issue. And it's the fact that the electricians don't know either. They're not used to this, so they don't know how to hook it all up. So as a default, just for a stat, generic wiring diagrams, we have 642 in our library ready to go. What we want to be in a position of is you ring and say, Sparky's on site, he's roaring at me for a diagram. We can email him to straight away. We just want to be there on hand just to help you guys. And that's what we strive for every day. So for everybody, that full engineering source is available day in, day out, and we do our utmost to help you. My last slide is a little bit left field. Oh, sorry, that's just an example of wearing diagram. <laughs> my voice is beginning to go after a few days. And it wasn't the Irish girl parting in Wellington either. It's from talking. I guess the last slide is um, from Central Heating New Zealand side. And the next three speakers are going to go through the new boiler. The big question is why? Why do we do it? And I guess what we want you guys to know is that we've changed this boiler because we listened. It's taken us time to make the adjustments. It's been a huge project for Firebird and a huge project for us. But we want to know that we listen to you guys and we hope we're after getting it right. We're after making probably a big change by moving from Riello, which is a reasonably known name on the market here, to Elko. And the reason why we chose Elko is they are above and beyond with their technology. They work on burners from 20 kilowatts right up to 80 megawatts. I've spent just over a week with Mario and each day he absolutely amazes me with the knowledge he has. The functionality for you guys is no different on setting up. If anything, it's easier. I hope you guys have seen that when you've done the demonstrations with Stuart and with Mario. It's, it's actually quite easy to set it up. We're not in a fine line of 11.5% anymore. We've got a bandwidth. The other thing is, is that diesel, globally, isn't getting the best name. With Elko, they are years beyond all the European directives that are being enforced on them. 
So we feel that by picking Elko with Firebird, we're actually after coming up with a green, if that makes sense, even though it's blue flame. It's a green burner. It's one of the most efficient burners that are on the market out there. You can't get better. So for all of us inside in this room, as we're talking to the household, when they hear the word diesel, we can confidently say to them, no, it's not dirty. It's not such. It's the best on the market. It's ahead of all the European regulations. And we're very, very happy to have the team here to be able to demonstrate and actually sell you guys this spoiler. So on that note, I will pass to Mario.